Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen S Gamer. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is a holiday weekend here in the U.S. I hope everybody out there is having a great time. That's what I'm doing. I came to visit my parents, and we're just spending family time. And while the girls are out there getting supplies for this afternoon's cookout, I thought I'd sit down and give you a little bit of my thoughts on this um, GameStop a new direction that they've taken, new old direction, if you will, going back to basics. <laughs> And it's really ironic, right? Because this company, this company gave away and threw away more games in the mid 2010s, late 2010s, than probably anybody in history. You know, this is, was a great time for collecting. I was getting games for, you know, three dollars, two dollars, one dollar, four for five, all that stuff, right? And now they want to go back. They're going to go back and buy <laughs> all these old games. Uh, and resell them, go back to their old business model. I think they're making a mistake. Let's go into hypotheticals here. How would you save GameStop? Let me give you my plan, right? which is a layered plan. Of course, these are just hypotheticals, guys. I'm not the owner of the truth, right? I'm, nobody is out there. But I'm sure you guys also have some great ideas. But let me tell you what I would think. If I was in charge of, of GameStop right, and their marketing, what would I do differently than what they're doing now? Well, let's face it, you know, GameStop, like many other brick and mortar stores, was hit hard by the rise of digital downloads by platforms like Steam, Epic Game, Nintendo, uh, their eShop bypassed physical media stores altogether and a lot of times offered better deals. This shift was really devastating for GameStop and other stores, which had long relied on physical games, right, physical copies. But instead of pivoting, towards digital, GameStop did a lot of weird things. They started buying cell phones. They went into other things that had nothing to do with anything, whether it's NFTs or anything like that. Uh, they didn't stay in their lane, if you will, and they didn't pivot with the business um, where, where the business market was going, and this really cost them a lot. It really did. Now, here's the thing. Opening a retro store might attract some loyal customers from before, who missed the physical experience of back then, but that isn't a sustainable business, not in today's market, right? The retro gaming community is very passionate, but it's niche, and many collectors already, they already know where to get their games, right? Whether it's conventions, eBay, what have you, they already know where to go, and they probably have better prices than they do, right? I would propose a different direction, right? I would propose that GameStop starts owning the products the physical products that they produce right and getting into co collaboration if not right out purchasing other uh, entities right so if GameStop strikes exclusivity deals with video game publishers to sell physical media exclusively at their stores that would be a start right now that might require some investments or like Microsoft does right for certain properties and you say Okay, I'm going to invest in your video game and the production of it. And in turn, I'm going to have the rights, the, you know, first right of refusal to sell the physical media. That means that, you know, you can have it or you can even work out a deal that you can have access to the physical media first and you can approve who else gets it for a fee. So you're always making money because you were involved in the production of the game. By doing this, GameStop could have products that nobody else would offer exclusive titles available only through their stores or online platforms right but it doesn't stop there right it really doesn't stop there GameStop should consider acquiring struggling companies that produce physical gaming products everybody's been talking about arcade one up and the loan that they got in order to stay afloat that is something that I would do day one I would go out and buy arcade one up arcade one up has the potential, right? Has the potential to make great products. They do. Uh, are they making them? No, right? <laughs> but they have the potential, and they have, more importantly, they have the licenses, right? They're known for creating arcade replicas that could also decorate the store. It could be an attraction for people coming in there. But remember, GameStop also has their own credit line. So even though 
you know you might be struggling to sell these at 599 whatever it is that these people are charging nowadays i don't know to me they're not worth more than 299 right but let's say that you wanted to sell them for 150 bucks average now you have that incentive that you can buy them credit buy them on credit just like you do in furniture stores right and this would allow gamestop not only to own the physical media there right they could have exclusives for the store and they can still distribute to other stores other models right not only that they can sell accessories at the store to upgrade to upgrade the arcade one ups that famously uh, let's face it they're not the base quality but if you want to do custom upgrades you can sell them right there from gamestop right that would be another avenue of revenue whether it's you know online sales for upgrades throughout the country or carry parts in store whatever whatever it is right and GameStop could pr provide the necessary funds and secure exclusive rights to many, right? To many of the uh, properties that people have been wishing for in Arcade One Up, right? Another company, think of this, another company that they could get would be Blaze Entertainment. Now, this is assuming, guys, I'm not saying these companies are for sale or anything, right? But this is what I would do. Because people might say, well, you know how much it would cost to obtain those co companies? And I would say, how much is it costing them not owning their own supply, right? How much is it costing them not having exclusive physical media? You can go with the Evercade, which to date has sold over a million cartridges, right? And they would have exclusive deals with certain game publishers already right out the go. Now you have exclusive consoles that you're selling at your store, which keeps a profit there at the profit center. You're, you're not, you know... Uh, subsidizing you know you you actually own this product as owners of the company so you can make more of a profit and evercade has really done it well the evercade did with a lot of the stuff that for example you know in television amico couldn't do uh they could do it to a greater scale and now they have physical media physical cartridges that they can carry in the store why they don't have them in store even as a third party i don't know because it would be the perfect fit right now for gamestop Right, and it's another potential for a new direction. All right, now check this out. Additionally, right, something else I could propose is GameCop, GameStop could um, purchase companies similar to Limited Run, right, where you can obtain exclusive rights for games that are not going to be published at all as physical media. And by contributing or investing or just actually building a company or buying a company, now you can participate in that. Now you have even more exclusive that you can carry in store. Now, a lot of you are saying this is going to, uh, you know, cost a lot of money. It does. It, it also costs a lot of money to run a lot of dead stores, to open stores that are not making money, right? Instead of doing that, invest into this, and you can build back up. Now you have exclusive collectors editions that are only GameStop exclusives. You can only order them through GameStop. You can only buy them through GameStop. And by having the GameStop name and the funds, more importantly, you can get these out a lot faster instead of people having to wait one and two years, whatever the hell it is, six months, in order to get these products now. You know, people would appreciate that a lot. Now, last but not least, right, let's talk about merchandise. Right now, GameStop stores are filled with items like t-shirts and Funko Pops and what have you that can be found at countless other stores. Right? There's no reason for you shopping if you can get them anywhere else and cheaper, especially online. These physical products, by the same means and ways, have to be GameStop exclusives. Right? Exclusives to the store. And now you can sell the t-shirts of all the, the properties that you own. Right? So when you're making these licensing deals for the games and everything else, you're also getting the, the rights to the, the um, uh, physical other physical products that you can make such as t-shirts mugs whatever the heck right and it's all exclusive to the store you can't get anywhere else you can only order online through gamestop or you can only purchase them at the store exclusivity 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 right that is the name of the game this is another way you can go right i'm giving these consultations free guys gamestop cohen just call me up just call me up i can fix your business <laughs> We're all experts, right? We're all act uh, when it comes to hypotheticals, we're all experts. But these are interesting ideas, I think, right? You guys can tell me yours. But what about if we made 
exclusive DLC, right? Imagine an action figure that you're selling at GameStop that comes with an exclusive skin redeemable at the game, and it's the skin of the character you're purchasing, right? Whether they produce the character first and you obtain the rights later or vice versa, it doesn't matter. It's only available at GameStop. If you want that skin, you have to purchase this product, period. End of the story, right? By co-producing these type of products, GameStop could reinforce the position in both the physical right, and now also have a foothold on the electronic market. Right? You could also make it where this download is only available from the GameStop store once you purchase this. Or you can have the option of just purchasing that download maybe at a higher price. I don't know. Whatever the deal is, it could be a lower price. But you really want to incentivize the customers to buy both, right? So let's wrap it up here. In conclusion, GameStop's new business strategy should focus on owning exclusive products that can only be purchased at GameStop stores through their online platform or physically at the store. These products, right, that they're co-producing could be video games, physical media, and then GameStop would not have to worry about the competition outside the store. They're creating their own ecosystem. This approach could create a strong brand identity again, one that they've lost, both in, in store, right, and online, because now you have an online market of exclusive products. And by not looking in the past, by looking in the future with a retro, uh, you know, uh, influence, they could really get out of this hole that they put themselves in. All right, guys, those are my hypothetical opinions, right? In a perfect world, if I if I was running GameStop instead of Cohen, this is what I would do. But I know it's a bit, been a, a good topic of conversation. You know, I've been busy with school, the baby and everything. So I don't have a lot of time to make these long form videos. And, you know, and uh, even when I'm making them, my voice isn't lasting that long to make them all the way through. But hey, these are my ideas. What would you do to save GameStop? Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. New videos every Monday and Sunday. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Gen X Gamer. Remember to like and subscribe, click that notification bell, and remember, never ever be afraid to be happy. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.